Hey folks, so this was um, one of the other images we've been working with um, which required us to create a selection and again copy and paste it into uh, another image which was the seabed image. Now just to use another form of uh, or another selection tool, another uh, you know, method of selection, um, we're going to use the quick selection tool which you'll find underneath the magic wand tool. Remember, hold down left, click, that allows you to select the, the, the tool that's underneath it. So, works the same way. We've got new selection, add to selection, or subtract from selection. So, I'm going to begin with a, a new selection. Um, you can alter the size of the brush. And you can always check that by moving the, the, the mouse over to see what the diameter. Now, we don't really want it too big. In fact, I'm going to keep it around about 11 or 12. Um, you can also increase the, the hardness which creates a, a bold outline or edge of the of the your brush size. And if you reduce the hardness right down you'll notice it becomes feathered and softer. Um, we're just going to keep it 100% at the moment because it means it won't bleed in, across any of the pixels and it'll just select exactly what we're looking to select. Okay, so again I'm going to use the navigator to zoom in hold down the left mouse button and just start drawing. Now what I'm going to do here is you'll notice that my brush doesn't really move that close to the edge of the, the shark here or what I'm trying to select. Uh, I'm just pushing it out. You'll notice that what's happening here is similar to the magic wand tool. It's the pixels are jumping or the selection is jumping to the pixels which are close to um, pigmentation and colour, so it's trying to find the outline for us, which is what we're looking for. You just need to be careful you don't go too near the edge, or what will happen is you'll end up pushing it out, and it'll go out with the, the selection, which can always be remedied um, later on by jumping between subtract from selection. So you'll notice that it automatically jumps to add to selection, because it knows that we're now working with um, creating a selection. So I'm going to do the majority of it using this tool, being very careful to make sure that I don't go out with the, the selected area. Starting from the inside, and, and can it, it's almost like you've got a bit of rope and you're just trying to push it out to follow the shape or uh, the selection. Okay, now. To make things easier for myself, instead of using the subtract method, because what will happen is I'll jump just as easily, I'm going to jump to my lasso tool and use the subtract from selection. Now when you're subtracting, start outside the selection, follow your line, background to the start point, and that chops it off. Okay. Similarly, I'm going to jump to my add to selection, and I'm going to just push out the points that need to be pushed out. Zoom in and continue this all the way around, making sure I've got the whole outline of the, the shark um, selected. So what I'll do here is just pause the video and continue with it, so I'm not keeping you watching me for so long, um, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so that's me got the selection of the, the shark, and I'm re ready to, to copy that selection. So edit, copy, Go to the seabed image, edit paste, and there's my shark pick in place. And remember, jump to your move tool, which will allow you to move the, the layer about. And I'm just going to name that. Now, if I want to resize it, edit transform scale. Remember to hold in shift and change the proportions. Now what I'm going to do is just duplicate the layer again, so I've got another copy for this shark number 2, OK, using my move tool allows me to move the shark over. Um, now what I'm going to do is go back to shark number 1, and at this time I'm actually going to flip a, a, a mirror, rather the position of the shark so it's facing the opposite direction. And to do this, I've got to edit transform. And this time, 
go to flip horizontal and you see they're changed looking at each other now. Okay. And what we can do is make this one slightly smaller again. So again, on chart number one, edit transform, scale, hold down the shift key and you can reduce the size of the chart. Try and make it look like it's smaller or further in the distance. Now really to get the illusion of the shark being further in the distance, I maybe need to play about with um, another couple of kind of settings. But a basic setting that we could use, or adjust rather, would be the opacity of this layer. Now each layer has a layer blend mode and also an opacity setting and a fill setting, as well as being able to lock, um, lock pixels, lock position, etc. So what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity and if you notice the shark will now start decreasing in opacity and it makes it a wee bit harder to kind of make out or see which is kind of fitting for the image itself particularly with it being under the sea when it becomes a bit harder to be able to see objects the further they're away uh, further they are in the distance rather so playing about with that setting gives us that that illusion um, you can also look at playing about with some of the blending modes um, what that does is this blends the modes with the layer below it now by highlighting normal that allows me to use the arrow keys just to flick through and you'll notice a change on each of the layers on, with the, the shark in, its, in itself and how is that affected by the layer below it Well, none of these may be suitable, but I'll see if I can find one that kind of maybe enhances the image itself to kind of give the illusion that the shark is um, kind of further in the distance and just coming out of the, the depths of the water. So I think I'll just stick with the. hard light setting and that's me happy with the image so I can save it at this point.